Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to be wherever you are on your wealth journey right now. Today I'm really excited and I've got the laptop out because we are going to be talking all things money with the one and only Jill Fielding. So let's open up and see if Jill is there. Um, hi Jill, how are you doing? I'm doing brilliantly, thank you Olivia. I'm having the most wonderful time in lockdown because it's given me the opportunity to clear my head, to finish writing a, a book, to write some new materials and to really um, plan the future. Because I think the future is really, really exciting. Once this horrible year is over, I'm really excited for 2021 and, and, and going forward. So I must say, um, being in isolation and, and being locked in has been quite a pleasurable experience for me. I know what you mean. I've kind of found the same thing. I mean, I've done all sorts while I've been in lockdown. I've started, obviously, this YouTube channel and, um, you know, spoken to people I've not spoken to for ages. And it's been really lovely. Um, people watching are probably a lot of people will know who you are already, Jill. But for those that are watching that don't know you, could you just explain a little bit about who you are and your background and everything? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm what the TV uh programs called a rags to riches story you know i've been on one hell of a journey so i was born in extreme poverty in the east end of london um had had nothing no emotional support no money no anything um and now i'm sitting in this magnificent mansion in uh, the sussex downs um because i've uh, made myself wealthy slowly i will say uh, over over the years and I've learned the techniques of and the process of creating money and uh, creating wealth for yourself. So I've, I've actually gone from the, the gutter to a, a mansion over my, my lifetime. Um, and I'm lucky enough now to be asked to speak. You know, I'm a, uh, an ex-financial expert for the BBC. I've, I've been on The Apprentice as a, as a business expert. I've been a secret millionaire on the telly. And I'm, I'm really privileged and, and humbled to have some fantastic opportunities presented to me now. And, uh, and that's wonderful because now I don't have to work. I certainly don't, don't have to work for money. I can spend my time teaching people what's important about money. I can share the stories. I can share the learnings of my journey such that anybody can follow that path if they choose to. I think that's fantastic. And I think it's really interesting what you say about that you've managed to get there, but you've gotten there quite slowly. And it's because there is not really a get rich quick, is there, Jill? It doesn't really exist. I mean, that's certainly what I've found. It's kind of get rich slowly and steadily and with a strategy and a plan in place, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. The only get rich scheme that works is robbing a bank and that has <laughs> other consequences. Other than that, everything else is a slow and steady process and it's an organic process. Um, and it's and it's a process that can go alongside your other life. So I had a normal life as a wife and a mum. I worked uh, in London for, for most of most of my working life, um, but I still had this wealth accumulation thing going on in the background until I didn't want to do it anymore, which was about uh, 24, 25 years ago now. Um, I decided I didn't want to do the working thing anymore. And I, and I had enough to, um, uh, to support myself and to support my family. But, you know, that was 20 years slog. You know, it, well, it's, yeah. uh, it's not like you click yeah. your fingers and, uh, and a miracle happens and, and suddenly you've got money in the bank. Um, you have to apply yourself. You don't need to be particularly bright. Um, you know, I left school at the age of 16 by mutual consent. They didn't like me and I certainly didn't like them. So uh, academia was never a big thing for me. Um, so you don't need to be exceptionally bright. You just need to plan and, and take action. That's the thing. You need to take action regularly and just persevere. Just keep on keeping on uh, and eventually you'll get there. Absolutely. So what sort of action can we take then, Jill? What is, what is the one, if somebody said to you, what is the one way to wealth? Is, is there a way to wealth that will help everybody? Um, in all honesty, no, there isn't. Uh, because every human being is different. Um, and every human being has different risk levels. Uh, some people are more frightened of 
certain things than others. Some people have huge families that they've got to support. Um, so everybody has a, a different approach. And fortunately, there are loads of different approaches to wealth. Um, and I always think there's not just one single pathway to wealth. It's like a three lane pulsating motorway, a, a ginormous highway with loads of vehicles on it. And if you take the analogy with money, the access lane or the slip lane is where you get all your basic finances sorted out. You get your rent sorted or your mortgage sorted. You get your insurances. You work out what utility provider you're going to have. You, you check all your outflows, all that kind of basic foundation work and then you go onto the motorway itself which has three uh three lanes in my motorway anyway um uh, the first one is about being involved or invested in land and property of some kind the second one is about being invested in shares or trading of some kind and the third lane of the motorway is about um being invested in business or you know or the internet counts as well you know some kind of um virtual thing is okay it could be your own business your own shop but you know business in its biggest uh, terminology um, and then as you go further up the motorway you hit this magnificent place called the service station now that always makes me laugh because service stations for real on motorways are great big huge concrete blocks where you you buy you know a rain mac and a camping chair and uh, you know you stop to uh, stop to go to the bathroom but the the thing about the service station in reality it's where you get rid of all the stuff you don't want so you go to the bathroom you know you chuck out the rubbish you've accumulated in the car you get rid of all the stuff you don't want and you take on board what you do want so you get refreshment um uh, you know and you might buy a book or a map or something like that now in the the money service station you do exactly the same you get rid of the stuff you don't need you know get get rid of the dds you're not not using just just get eliminate all the stuff that isn't helping you and take on board the stuff that will help you you know so so get support get education uh listen to your youtube channel um all of those kind of things because what they do is they absorb into you and then you're better fit to go back onto the motorway and to go faster because you're safer uh you know and you know where you're going because you, you've got a plan and you've looked at the map and so on um and you know you can get to wealth uh, refreshed and more able um to be safe and secure going forward uh, and of course with the service station you need to stop at one every now and then because you don't just do it once and then you're okay you have to keep going the idea of perseverance going around one more time is really important with wealth creation I think that's really interesting, Jill, as well. And it, 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 certainly with the um, the access lane of motorway and with the service station, I've done certain videos on that. And um, there's one that I can think of because obviously this time of year we're at Christmas now. Um, obviously this video is going live on Christmas Eve, and I think the time between Christmas and New Year is that time when everyone kind of plans for the next year, isn't it? Where, um, people are sort of looking forward to 2021 after the horrendous year that has been 2020, and um, I think people are going to start planning. You know, and, and certainly my um, recommendation would be to, for people to start looking at the access lane of the motorway and start planning their finances for 2021 and where do they want to be um, because I get the feeling that a lot of people out there are kind of they feel like they're being dictated to by governments and things like that and the wider economy out there that might be putting pressure on them to do certain things whereas actually if they just kind of look at their own circumstances they could actually make something substantial what would you say on that? Um, I, I think that's an absolute brilliant idea. First of all, I think if 2020 has taught us anything is that none of us like uncertainty. None of us like this. We don't know what's going to happen next. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people have been furloughed. Some people have had their hours reduced and so on. And we don't like that a sense of feeling of, of being out of control and what money management does is it brings back the control to you so that you feel more certain and of course when you feel more certain you're more protected from this outside world um, and I think that's really important so I always say to, to everybody go through five steps um, and those five steps are really a great um, exercise, a great opportunity to complete during uh, Christmas and New Year. So that you start the new year ready to rock and roll and you know you've 
got the foundations in place and uh, and it gives you a sense of liberation you know and excitement that you can do something so i'll quickly tell tell you what the five steps are yeah. the first one yeah. is, is is about understanding what money comes in and out because most people don't know they earn earn a, a, a wage packet and it's all gone by the end of the month and they don't know where so the first one is about being aware where your money comes from and where it goes i've got a um, video on that one. which i'll pop up here for everybody as well so if you haven't watched that video it's about creating a wealth action plan for yourself so watch that one between now and the new year fantastic that would be ideal to watch that one uh, the second one for me is about the idea that you've got to make your money last until the next payday or benefit day or pension day or wherever your money comes from because most people don't seem to understand the concept of what you've got now has to last until next time and you've got to sort of budget and eke your money out over the month so it's about learning those skills of you know if i've got 30 days that this money has got to last me i can only really spend one thirtieth of my money each day you know that's the simple principle but that idea of you know planning for the future the near future with your money and then the next principle is about understanding and managing debt and i know you'll have a video on that somewhere because yeah, I've, your, your your yeah, I've got a whole playlist on managing debt so i'll pop that up uh, either up here or down in the uh, uh description underneath the video so yeah okay uh, okay so, so i urge everybody to 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 watch uh, watch those videos and listen to olivia speak um because because debt is is the one thing that kills people you know you can get into debt at the age of 18 and it's enough to keep you in poverty your entire working life mm -hmm. um so being able to control and manage debt is really important uh, the fourth principle that people need to understand and can think about after christmas is this concept that money has a value in the future people seem to think that it's your money's not worth anything you know next year or the year after uh, but it is. Uh, if you can get your money invested in things that grow faster than the rate of inflation, which is the rate at which the, our cost of goods go up each year, then your money's always worth more in the future uh, than it is today. And an important concept there is to understand the difference between savings and investments because savings ain't going to do it for anybody you can't live long enough to save a fortune so you're going to have to get your head around investing of some kind uh, going forward and the fifth principle is what you're all about what this program's about what the planning is all about which is understanding that if it's to be it's up to me if i want money i've got to do it in all honesty the government aren't sitting around a table at number 10 talking about us as individuals i don't care about us as individuals um so if we want something to happen in our life we've got to get off our backsides and do it um so understanding that concept of, of self-responsibility accountability that kind of thing is really important and too many people just say oh i can't do anything about it it's my parents fault my education's fault the government's fault my employer's fault whatever it is no it isn't it's your fault um so you might as well grasp that net nettle and get on with it and everybody can change can't they because even even if it has been you know your dog's fault cat's fault whoever's fault it might have been if you're willing to grasp that change i believe that everybody can make that change and become wealthy and i, I know that you believe that as well jill yeah yeah i i do it's um it is it's a possibility for everybody and the thing about the five principles and the work that you do um is, is this everybody can make a difference to their current financial position and move themselves into a better position now that isn't necessarily going from poverty to extreme wealth and being a multimillionaire, but using the principles everybody can make a difference in their life which makes them feel better uh, is better for their mental health it's better for their sense of security and all that kind of stuff but actually liberates them because when you're in control of your money um, and you can start generating spare cash with it you become free <laughs> and then uh, eventually you can generate enough money from your investment activity and the things that you do such that you don't have to go to work and then you know life becomes a complete choice then um and that's amazing and everybody even if they're on benefits today can start to make 
slight changes and a slight movement take certain actions that will get them closer to that position with every day that passes that's amazing i think that's really good and what would you say to the people because i know there are a lot of people out there that think oh but what if there's not enough money to go around you know is there enough money to go around if i become rich does that mean somebody else has to be poor how does that work no absolutely that's what i call the scarcity mentality the idea that there is a finite amount of money um and we've got to got to share it you've only got to look at the uh, money supply and I, I know i'm sort of going off on a tangent here but the bank of england published the amount of money in circulation and every year it goes up because <laughs> they just print more so even on a very simplistic level um there is more money uh, uh being created every year and of course um i don't lose anything from supporting you so th 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 there's no scarcity uh in my time with you there there's no scarcity uh with money um uh, and the more people that understand that there is a sea of abundance there is a you know a, an almost infinite amount of money and most people don't take their share i mean if if we divided up all the money in the world i think every single person would be a, a, a at least a, a millionaire so there's enough <laughs> what most people uh, are doing is taking something for themselves take it taking their share so but for me i've always had the principle that um if I help somebody else get wealthy, that in some way will help me get wealthy. Uh, and on a really simplistic level, if I help somebody else get wealthy and start a business, then they might refer customers back to me in the future. So, you know, I've benefited. So uh, I believe in this massive sea of abundance and there's enough. That's fantastic. And it's about kind of reciprocity and everybody being, you know, a win-win situation for everybody, really. Um, no, I'm, I'm a complete believer in that as well, Jill. And I think it's fantastic. You know, I mean, obviously you and I have done property. A lot of you will know that I've freelanced for Jill for probably about the last seven years now. And we met through property investing, didn't we? And for those of you who don't know this as well, Jill actually taught my parents how to property invest back in the early 2000s, didn't you, Jill? So that's really fantastic. And I know that there'll be lots of people out there wanting to learn from you and, and i think you have got some courses available at the moment haven't you jill the ones that i was thinking about particularly you've got a new money course that's just come out haven't you could you tell us a little bit about yeah. that well the um the idea of my money training is, is this five principles of financial control and wealth creation and it's about concentrating on the access lane of our motorway and um there's modules for each of the five steps so uh you know it's online people can watch the modules as they choose um it's me speaking we've got some fantastic videos and animation that goes alongside um they're they're relatively short easy to watch um and it gives people the sense of these five principles and you can keep re-watching them and you know uh, and go back and remember stuff and then for every step part of your financial development go back and watch it again because there'll be a different learning for you um so i'm really uh pleased with my money training it's something we've been working on for a while and it's something that everybody can benefit from whether they've got whether they've got you know two pound in their pocket or two million pounds in their pocket um it, it's the principles are the same for everybody so i'm really excited about it and it covers a lot of topics that you cover so Brilliant. there's yeah, a lot so of it should quite nicely with this channel and how everything kind of fits together um, i'll put what i'll do is i'll put links for all of your courses in the description just underneath this video so if anybody's interested in the my money training um, to explore those five aspects a little bit more do have a look there as well um, and another one you've got jill is becoming and staying wealthy which also sounds like a really interesting course um well that's really about um the bigger principles of wealth and um i i started writing about that for my eldest daughter she's now uh, 31 um and i started writing about it for her um and i wanted to show her that life could be different if you just approached it slightly differently so she asked me for a dog for her i think it was her 16th day but rather than just buy her a straightforward dog we bought her a racing greyhound so she as well as loving the dog which she did um she had to get to grips with the idea of 
putting it in kennels and getting it trained but then when it runs your money so uh, it was you know buying your child a puppy which is what a lot of parents do but with us it it came with a learning experience as well so um and i think that's a, a good premise for how you apply um to life really um and i know when i was very poor and i was trying to to get some money i always always as well as all my other jobs i always uh, worked in a pub worked in a bar because for me it was much more sensible to be on the serving side of the bar than on the paying drinking side of the bar. And I still met the same people um, and I still got paid and I got paid. Um, I still had a drink because occasionally people would buy me a drink. Um, so it was the same experience, just like buying the puppy, but looking at it slightly differently meant that I was gaining financially rather than losing financially. And I think that's really the mindset thing that's important to me. And if you have that mindset, you'll be wealthy throughout your life, whatever you're doing. So it's a little bit like turning everything on its head, isn't it? And uh, kind of just thinking the opposite um, all the time. Uh, yeah, really interesting stuff. Um, the last um, one I want to talk about is your property boot camp, Jill, because I think I'm on the property boot camp as well. I think I do one of the modules on that one. So um, that's a really good one. And that's for anybody um, going into the wealth motorway and wanting to know about property specifically, because um, the three lanes, if you remember, are property, stocks and shares and having a business. And uh, the property side, um, obviously, I teach a lot of that for you, don't I, Jill? And I've been doing that for a long, old time now. Um, absolutely love it. So uh, property boot camp, I'll pop that one just underneath as well. But it's basically, I mean, you can talk us through it if you like. Jill. It's pretty much the basics about getting to grips with property investing in this country. It is. And I think a lot of people, you know, when you say investing in property, they think, oh, I could never do that. It's a huge, big, scary thing and you need loads of money. Well, neither is true. It's not a big, scary thing and you don't need loads of money. Um, and what the Property Bootcamp does is introduce all the important facets of getting started with a property journey. So it's understanding what having a strategy might be, you know, am I, do I want to generate income from these properties or do, do I want to generate capital from it? Um, you know, we have you doing a brilliant session on, on finding the money, uh, which is what <laughs> most people, yeah, most people worry about that because they think I haven't got any money. I can't possibly be a property investor, but I know you would uh, demonstrate quite clearly that you can get started with very small amounts of money and that money comes from areas that you don't normally expect. So I won't say any more about that. I'll just tease it in because you do a fantastic session there. Um, and there's the modules on like capital growth, capital appreciation. There's modules on how to find uh, property deals because most people think to themselves I'll never be able to find a deal I'll never be able to find a property but 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 99% of people will be able to find a property I mean you know you know yourself um, you know before you were a property investor you drive every day to the pick up the kids from school or to go to the supermarket and you you drive past a property and you think to yourself oh that would make a great bed and breakfast it would make a good rental flat or whatever you do absolutely nothing about it because most people don't do anything about it and then blow me down six months later somebody's turned it into a buy to let uh, flat and there's tenants in there and so on so everybody sees these opportunities all the time they might not recognize them as opportunities but they are there mm -hmm. so in the property boot camp it will help you find deals it'll help you pay for deals it'll help you understand what's the difference between income and capital um you know so there's an introductory module i think there's about 12 modules in total um on every topic um including the fabulous finance one fantastic oh thank you jill um it's interesting as well because we've got obviously all this covid stuff and all this uncertainty around brexit and everything else and i actually think that produces more opportunities now in probably both in business and in property um at the moment would you say that was true uh, certainly when i talk about property uh, we only have to look back on 2020 and we see two things we see firstly a medical disaster with covid19 and then we also see the complete resilience of the property market 
because apart from a 47 day blip in March when basically everything shut down, the property market has continued <laughs> to grow in its normal way at a normal growth rate demand has continued to increase because people want to live in slightly different places um we've had more i, I think i read that we've had something like 220 uh, more properties come to the market per day this year than did in 2019 so the property market has shown a resilience and an immunity to covid that frankly us humans haven't cracked yet <laughs> so it's been absolutely amazing so the opportunities uh are the same and as long as you have these different strategies you've got a plan um then the property market has been brilliant because some people have had to swap from buy to let to service accommodation for example um depending on their local demand and circumstances but if you've got those skill sets if you know that then you can remain as immune as the property market has done um and, and likewise with business i mean uh, i i read that uh, hobbycraft their turnover has increased by 200 percent this year because people are sitting at, home. Been there at least three times this last week so. <laughs> <laughs> so so some businesses have done incredibly well um and uh you know if you wanted to start a business this is a great opportunity to do it because because life has changed for most people and they've now got new needs which you can fulfill Absolutely. Well, listen, Jill, thank you so much for joining us today on the channel. Very, very much appreciated. And hopefully um, next year, hopefully, if all goes well, we might even be able to do it again in real life. So um, we shall that, see what happens. That would be awesome. I, I, I miss seeing you for real <laughs> and your mum, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you, you next year and seeing all, all the people that you connect with, because uh, that's what gives me my buzz. This is all right, and I can see you, and it's lovely, but uh, there's nothing like giving people a hug and seeing the light in their eyes. No. So I'm really looking forward to that, uh, and I hope everybody's safe and uh, have, has a wonderful uh, Christmas and New Year. Fantastic. Yes. Merry Christmas, everybody. And thanks ever so much once again, Jill. So thanks ever so much for watching this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jill. I thought she was absolutely amazing and she's just such a fantastic person to learn from. Do give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the interview with Jill. Don't forget as well to have a watch of these two videos up next because they will definitely help with your wealth journey. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And thanks ever so much, guys. Have a really, really good Christmas and I will see you next week.